came back here. Uh, I ordered it. I came here last week. Um, tried to replace the knob. Uh, before I replaced the knob, I inspected the thermostat shaft that was seized, and I'm sure what's uh, happening here. So this is the Viking range we have. And I'll show you the problem here. So before I show you the problem, I'll show you where the model and serial numbers on this unit. So here you can see the the thermostat knob you can select you feel and you can see that you're selecting a stuff but in fact it's not working why because you see that little small crack the reason you get this knob breaking is because of this uh, thermostat shaft the thermostat shaft is uh, seized completely uh, and i'm gonna put this on top here I even uh, tried to use a plier, I could not unseize it. So the proper fix for this uh, would be to replace it and I'll show you the part here. And this is the thermostat for bacon broil. The part number is this one, VKPB01036. And in order to replace this, and you have to work on it from the top, from this area, and from the inside. The first thing we want to do is we will take this uh, dirt tray out. You can pull it out all the way, and then lift it a little bit, and then pull it down. I have my blanket, and I put everything here. Uh, uh, always protect your customer's countertops and flooring. Um, I also had these sheets I thought in case if I have to pull the unit out, but I didn't need it. So that's the good part And if you look inside you see that capillary tube that looks like a, a copper wire this one This one runs from this thermostat control goes underneath there and then I'll show you here It goes in that little small hole goes from here at the back at the bottom of these burners runs all the way to that little small corner and then from that corner it comes inside of the unit that's your uh, temperature sensor ca capillary tube which controls the temp uh, temperature inside of the oven too uh, i will be replacing that so disconnected from here so here it has a little small clip that holds it in place, you see like that, and the same thing here. This comes out here, open it and let it sit like this. And now I will take these two screws out and those two screws out. I guess this is screw and that screw needs to come out. And I usually put a small towel right here to make sure I don't scratch anything because this unit is old but it's in really good shape. 
and I do not want to uh, make any scratches on it. So I always put an extra blanket here, a towel, just to be safe, but uh, you can always open the door too to make sure you don't scratch it. Just leave it open and then work on it from there. So the whole control panel comes out like this. We'll open these two screws. When you open this screw, this uh, little small ring may come out. And here is the new thermostat. You do not have to open it all the way, just open it a little bit so you can install your wires. And you install it the same way that this old one is, so that way you will not make any mistake. Again, double check to make sure your power is off. Of course, the power is off here. And if you look at the readings for this, this is for the bake wire, this is the broil wire, and the common wire goes here. So this kind of, uh, the wire is one by one. You don't have to read these, or you don't have to know what uh, those wires are for. And when you're disconnecting, pull it out uh, from here from the connector itself do not pull it from the wire out you're gonna cause more uh, problems the common wire I got needle nose plier or flat screwdriver whichever you're comfortable with you can use that From the south. If you're using two hands, it's more easier, and you you can use your two hands and pull it out instead of uh, kind of um, slipping it all over the places. Uh, the good part is you're not gonna get any scratch here, but again, I'm very careful with countertops and um, part of the cabinet to make sure I don't uh, cause any scratches. Uh, and if, if you're working like me and you wanna make a video or something, you can always uh, put a towel here and then that way you're safe. New port now. The new port you're gonna turn it from here. So what you can do on the new part is that you have to add one of your screws at least. If you don't know where to put the screw, you can always look at your old thermostat and see kind of marks from the older screw, which is far right, far left. That way you're on the safe side too. Uh, Sometimes by mistake you add your screws in there too, and then that way it will not hold this uh, uh, plate in place. Once you install your thermostat, you can do this part last. I keep it there for now and then you start opening your thermostat slowly but you can only do it you have to insert it inside here
can see half of the uh, cabinet tube is out here, the, or the temperature sensor you call it. Do not pull it hard from there, but to reach it there, work its way. Um, it goes from here, it goes all the way to the back there, and then use your other hand to feed a little bit more. still need to push it more in Now I have to put this front panel back in. When we installing this front panel, be careful with these wires. You do not want to pinch it here or here and cause a, a spark or a arc. Do not tie this screw all the way. Keep it a little bit loose until you reinstall this one. Once this one is tight, you can retight this one too. And sorry, I made a, another small mistake here. Um, these screws keep them more loose. The reason you're leaving these uh, screws a little bit loose is because you wanna uh, line up these uh, screw holes. I got these um, four screws, they go on for two corners, two in here, two on the right hand side. So now you got a little bit of flexibility to reline it and add your screws back in. Always use your hand um, when adding these screws back in until you know it's all the way in because if you force it it's gonna strip the the screw holder from the back and then uh, it's gonna give you a very hard time last time i made a mistake by using a drill uh, at first without uh, screwing it with my hand first so i kind of stripped the inside of that screw holder and then when i saw this screw was spinning the back um, there's a little small um, screw holder at the back. It looks like a metal piece. Uh, so by mistake, what I did was I put my hand here to hold it in place. And then I add my drill, um, I use my drill super, super fast. And I guess I wasn't able to hold it that tight from the back. And the back piece spun and cut my finger. I was bleeding badly. so. That's why I learned this in a hard way that you always add your screws with the finger with your hands first And then you can retight it at the end with your with your drill You see I got a little bit of flexibility Why because I have these screws loose I will add this screw back in Don't rush. Anytime you rush on working on stuff like this, it's gonna cause more damage. It's gonna cause more problems. Take your time and do it properly so that be your 100% on the safe side. Now I know my screws are in. Uh, there's another thing I can tell you that uh, it's very important. You see, if I put my knob here, the knob may hit the stop here. I did not even uh, take this screw out, everything is original. What you can do is you have to hold it up. You see that, the difference? Do not uh, retie those screws while it's in this position. Hold it tight with your finger like this, bring it up, 
and then add your screws. And the same thing here. See that? Right now, the knob may hit this spot, but if you bring it up with your hand and hold it and retort your screw, looks beautiful. Now you can um, retort this screw and the one on the right hand side. <coughs> so here uh, comes with the thermostat ring it was something like this right well since your thermostat is installed properly take one of your screws out the another one you can just get it loose a little bit The first and second screw, you want to go zigzag. You put one there, loose, do not tighten, over tighten it. Another one goes opposite way, right here. And then the other one. The other one goes there, and then another one comes right here. So zigzag.
little bit there it's a little bit out of its uh, way so i'm gonna also have to fix that because it's closer to the uh, directory every time you pull the directory it's gonna touch that so i'll fix that too yeah right here you can always bring it up so now it's safe see it's clean now I'll have to add the centerpiece uh, inside you see that little small hole you want to line up this hole with that with that piece of metal kind of insert it like this and then from here you can see these uh, hooks they set uh, straight into those holes right there on the two center ones there's four of them let me pull this out. There's four screw, uh, screw holes. This goes on the two center on the top. If it's not setting properly, you see that it's too too much in. You may want to pull it out a little bit. Look at it back and forth. Pull it out until you see that the screw setting close by there. Here. And then you push it in. Mm, this oven looks really clean, but I always tell my customers to clean uh, these sides. You see these debris and garbage stuff, the food particles, they fell down there and customers they don't know how to um, clean those sometimes they don't know how to pull these out it's a good time to ask your customer to do a little bit of cleanup uh, while you're working here and the same thing here you got a hole the hole gets lined up with this little small catch so you kind of insert it there you see and then push it down slowly it will not sit properly so you may want to play back and forth and then insert them They also go opposite way you see these holes I got one hole here one hole uh, I got one nipple here one nipple here these nipples will go like this if you have this opposite in your hand like this or like this uh, yeah so like this it's okay but if you have it opposite way it may not sit because these nipples needs to go in, inside of these holes And the same thing on these ones, they, they got nipples. Here's the last part. This is a little bit tricky. I'll show you, hopefully I can do it with one hand. You see that wheel? When you insert the drip tray, there is that one wheel on the unit itself, one on the drip tray. You wanna bring this up. See, it sets. And then you can insert it back in. You can also add this drip tray before you put anything on the top. So after you add this drip tray, you can move it. You can move this back and forth. 
and look at it from the top to see the wires, the capillary tube, nothing is touching this drip tray just to be on the safe side. It's a good idea to turn off the gas and the power at the same time but in a case like this I didn't have to turn off the gas because I did not pull the unit out so I'm okay here. Um, you can also turn your knobs, the gas knobs back and forth to make sure they are not touching these sides. Sometimes they scratch on the side and then you will get a recall back. The same thing. Um, so now we are gonna install the knob. I remember I left it right here and I also told my customer that uh, please do not use it, I'm just gonna keep it there. When I come back, I can uninstall it. So here you go, finally. You can see how it looks. This here. Now you know that the knob is perfect. Sitting here, turn it. Here you go. Did you hear that click noise? Beautiful. It's working. It's not a scratching the side of the ring. I'm gonna go down the stairs and turn on the power. It's my breaker panel. Oven. It was not marked in. I had to mark it. Uh, customer was able to help me find it because there's a lot of name tags here. I did, did not see oven or range um, So I had to find that the customer had to turn it on and off one by one and I was up the stairs I usually stay on the phone with my customer and tell them that you keep turning off your unit Until I see it goes off and then I'll tell you so I had to talk to him um, I was um, I was standing by the downstairs and when I heard that the fan was running on the oven, it went off and I told the customer that the power is off. So I came down and turned it back on. I had to do this couple of times to make sure I find the correct one. I told the customer that turn it back on, he did. And then the oven came on. So I was confident that this was the switch. And then I finally marked it down. So it's on now. Always um, close your uh, breaker panel um, lid or box and uh, also close this to be safe and then you can go upstairs and check it again. It's, uh, it's always nice to turn off the customer's uh, light when you're going upstairs and downstairs so that way they, they like this. Um, I didn't turn on anything here, I think the customer was working. I'm gonna run this oven for um, 350 just to make sure everything is working perfectly fine. I know the customer's complaint was that the knob would turn but the oven would not come on, which this was the problem. But I fixed this and I replaced the thermostat so I'll still run it. In the meantime, I can adjust these tops and give my customers some tips and tricks about their appliances while I'm running this. Usually my customers are super nice to let me uh, make videos in their houses. This customer was super friendly. Uh, she was just joking and said I, I can even come in your videos if you want. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, share it with others. You can also follow me on Facebook. It's called Hamid Appliances Repair. Thank you.